Today, I have somebody really interesting here that I'd like you to meet. This is Conway Bound, and we met many years ago when he was teaching a CRM class in Australia. Conway is really unique with teaching CRM. He is an excellent instructor, and because of his background and where he comes from, he's been able to create a really unique product that's very helpful within our worlds. And I would like you to meet Conway. And Conway, can you tell us about your background and about why you have interest in training and also your CRM? Well, thanks, Mike. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very humbled that you've chosen me as a subject. I think there are plenty more people that are much more interesting than I am, but uh, I'll, I'll bore you for the next couple of minutes. So here's a bit of my background. What I'll do, though, is I'll, I'll just share the screen so that you can see some of the stuff that uh, I've been involved with. So you should be able to see a screen coming up right now. And there it is there. See that? Okay, terrific. So my background, I spent 15 years flying in the Army. I've been in the Army now 33 years. Uh, I was, flew Blackhawks or UH-60s and Chinooks, CH-47s. Um, there I am in the uh, the Middle East with my battle crew, excellent bunch of guys. Interestingly, the guy on the right there used to be my instructor when I was on pilot's course. Then he became my co-pilot when we were in the Middle East. So uh, always be careful of the butt you kick because one day you may have to kiss it, as they say. Um, I have an air transport and commercial pilot license for helicopters and airplanes, and I used to do a lot of power line surveys. So I'm very familiar with flying at low level. Uh, and the hierarchy and infrastructure of power lines. Uh, there's yours truly flying a little MD500 um, on a power line. And I had a, a crash just a couple of days before this cr this picture, uh, tail rotor malfunction, one of the few times that the tail rotor has failed in an MD500 in the, the way that it failed in my case. Uh, I was an EMS pilot in the Torres Strait, uh, just between Australia and New Guinea flying single engine, single pilot aircraft over long expanses of water uh, in very bad weather. So that was not an enjoyable job. I was also a CRM facilitator, a crew resource management facilitator for the Australian Defence Force, a helicopter underwater escape training instructor. I do commercial CRM courses. And of course, Mike, that's where I met you. I was a surveillance pilot for the Australian Customs Service in the Northern Territory, uh, flying the BK-117 and the EC-145. Uh, I also imported my own uh, aircraft into Australia, an American uh, former US Air Force forward air control aircraft that served in Vietnam. Unfortunately, it was destroyed in a freak weather accident. I was also the official war artist for the Army. Um, I like to do a lot of uh, art and I came came to the note of the Chief of Army, and he made me the first official, uniformed official war artist since the Korean War. Uh, I also deployed to Afghanistan uh, with the Royal Australian Air Force and flew uh, Heron um, UAVs in support of Special Forces. They're about the same size as a Predator. And I am still serving in the Army as a Reserve Officer, currently doing doctrine writing. And I own... Uh, IPAS Australia, where I specialise in training. So that's my background there, Mike. I'll uh, go back to the original boring screen. They should be able to see me. Can you see me now? I see you perfect, Conway. Yeah. Can you tell perfect, us a little yeah. bit about why you got interested in doing CRM? And even before or when we talk about that, if you could explain what CRM is and why it's important. Okay, no problems. CRM, in a nutshell, is how we work with other people and how we work by ourselves. It's understanding any problems that may arise in the way that we do the things that we do, what they call human factors. And they could be psychological, physiological, or physical issues. Um, I became a CRM facilitator in the Australian Defence Force within the aviation uh, realm because CRM had its genesis in aviation by United Airlines and NASA back in 1979, 1980, after a spate of really bad accidents. And since then, it has grown. It's now we're up to about generation eight of crew resource management training or human factors training. 
That's good. And Conway, I understand, well, I know from the classes I was in with you is that this is a very passionate subject for you and that you have developed your own training systems. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And in other videos, we can go deeper into it, but just as a, like a, a opening level, can you tell us some of what you've done and your background on that? Sure, no problem. So uh, as I said, I trained in the military. So what they did in the military is they would train the facilitators from each of the three services, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, each of which have different contexts for their aviation. And so each facilitator would then go back to their own unit and their own context and then tailor the course specifically for their peers. Now, I found that when I was doing that within the Army environment, that being a civilian pilot myself, I thought, well, there is actually a market outside for this sort of training because I knew of plenty of people that had had close calls or accidents and they were all preventable. And so I developed my own course, which specialized in rotary wing flying in the Australian environment at low level. But then I started branching out and looking at the emergency services because the nature of wildfire fighting, or as we say in Australia, bushfire fighting, is very similar to military aviation both are fighting an enemy uh, military it's going to be another nation and other people and in firefighting it's going to be um, fire but we all always have to consider terrain have to consider the vagaries of the enemy and how we need to outflank them to defeat them and so there are a lot of parallels uh, so I created a course and I'll just share another screen here which might help to illustrate it a bit better So my course, um, it's now I call it CTRM because a lot of organizations prefer team resource management. Um, they don't feel that their teams are crews, but they have seen the value in the training. So CTRM is the same as CRM. And it comes, uh, what I plan, what I do is 10 basic modules. And you can see this circle here describes the modules and we start off the pink section here is everything to do with the human body so element 1.1 we talk about human performance limitations such as how our eyes work how our ears work equilibrioception that sort of stuff so element 1.2 is the human mind personality uh, communicating um, uh, aggression uh, and those sort of aspects of uh, working as a member of the team. And then element 1.3 is the mind-body interface, things like fatigue or processing information, being distracted, being overloaded with work, and how we can commit mistakes or errors um, or even violations because of that mind-body interface. So that's the the first part where we look at the individual. The second part, we look at where we work together as a team. So we start off with communication, the barriers to communication, and how many problems arise because of a breakdown in communication. We look at teamwork and how teams uh, are made up and what how their, uh, their primary function is to achieve a goal and that they are to coordinate and cooperate with each other and where all the weaknesses and barriers may lay within the teamwork. And the last part of the team environment is the situational awareness. And we look at the three levels of situational awareness, being able to detect an external stimuli and comprehend what that means and then project that into the future for your mission. The last phase of the standard modules are threat and human error management. So we talk about risk management, how we can identify risks and how we can mitigate against those risks. We talk about judgment and decision making. Um, how we make decisions and how we can sometimes be bounded by the amount of information that we have coming in. Therefore, our decisions aren't going to be as optimal as we would like. And the last is task and task planning, briefing and debriefing. And that's one of the most critical things we can do. So that's why you get your most experienced people to do the planning. And then you need to be able to brief everyone so they know their job. But more importantly, you need to debrief people so you can learn the lessons from whatever mission that you've just uh, just uh, undertaken. Uh, I've written a book on decision-making called Sparrow Core. You can see that top left-hand corner. And another one called No Stopping for Teams is currently underway. But besides those ones in the standard course, I have these electives. So I have six separate electives, mission crew training, 
for people who are not aviation trained but who perform roles on board an aircraft, working safely around aircraft, such as at a heli base or an air base, low flying in a wires and hazards environment where I use the skills that I picked up in the military but also flying, flying power lines and the things that I learned from my numerous close calls, aerodynamics for non-aviators so that people who have to use aircraft understand um, when uh, the, how to use them to the uh, to the best of their ability or when circumstances are such that they are not going to perform as well as you would like. Uh, map reading and navigation, a skill that we're losing now that we have so much of a reliance of GPS and smart devices and helicopter landing site safety officer, mainly for ambulance and police officers who may need to create a landing site by a uh, an accident or something similar for an EMS helicopter to come in. So that's basically my training there. And I'll just close out that screen there. And that's what I do. And Conway, I know um, over the years in dealing with CRM training and aviation training is that a lot of other industries have picked up uh, these training uh, modules and they've interfaced them into their own systems because the, the core of CRM training is actually teams teams yes. working together. And so can you tell us a little bit about that, how the frame of training that you're doing is much bigger than just aviation based? Oh, 100%. Yeah. So uh, the Sparrow Call and the No Stopping for Teams books are actually designed for use, not just within an aviation or firefighting environment. It can be used anywhere where you need to manage a project, make decisions or work in a, a team environment. Because as you rightly pointed out, CRM is all about working by ourselves and working as a member of the team. So things like stress and fatigue can in impact you whether or not you're flying an aircraft or fighting a fire or working in an office environment they're all exactly the same outcomes the results may be different so it may be more critical fatigue is more critical if you're say fighting a fire or flying an aircraft but you're still going to be suffering the effects personally of fatigue so how do we mitigate against that uh, that's one of the things we look at when we do crm training so it has applications outside of the emergency services and outside of the cockpit that's great. Thank you, Conway. And in other videos, we'll be diving deeper into these subjects. Conway, thank you for your time today you've spent with us. And I've learned a little bit, and I hope everyone else has too. And if you like the video that we've done with Conway, please let us know, and we'll do more videos like this. And also in other videos with Conway, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into his skills and show you a little bit about the courses that he has developed. We're doing this for all of you. If you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment below. See you next time.